Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6. Coming up this morning, with spring being here, the risk of dangerous storms rises. Is your home ready to withstand high winds and hail? In another day of searching for the missing 11-year-old boy from La Vista is about to begin. Multiple law enforcement agencies are now getting involved in the search. Two girls from Seward work together to make their neighborhood safer, and we're going to hear from their story real soon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I'm Katrina Swirl. And I'm Nathan Grieve, and it is drier, hypothetically, because <laughs> you step outside and you're going to feel pretty soggy pretty quick here. Yeah, that's right. Humidity is on the higher side out there. It's feeling already a little sticky out there, but we aren't seeing really showers out there for most of our viewing area, at least. Most of the showers off to the east on the Iowa side right now. We are just stuck under the clouds. Did have a little bit of some brief little tiny showers in Lancaster County. Now most of those are around Omaha. So overall, drier conditions as you step out the door on this Thursday morning. But some of us, not all of us, are seeing a little bit of patchy fog out there. Most of that focus right around the Wahoo area. Three miles right now for your visibility. Everyone else, a perfect 10. So where that fog is out there, you might have a little bit of some mist and drizzle. And of course, all of us stuck under those overcast skies. So it still feels pretty gloomy out there, but temperature wise, pretty nice out there. We're in the 60s at 63 at the airport in Denton Road, a little warmer for East Campus. And as for everyone else around the area, still in those 60s, not 150 out there, 63 Grand Island, 64 Omaha, and 64 also in Beatrice. Now later today, we'll warm up to the upper 60s and also the upper 70s. We'll finish Finish off your Thursday forecast and look at the weekend coming up in a few minutes. Well, severe weather season is here and a question you should be asking yourself is, is your home prepared? And here with tips to keep your home safe, reporter Giles Pembroke. Good morning. So stormy weather is here, so I caught up with a local tool shop manager for tips on keeping your home safe. Now he says to make sure your gutters are ready for the rain. Outside, make sure our, your gutters are clean. Um, we do have gutter parts and replacements. Make sure they're working properly. Without that, you can get water in your basement and have damage that way. In the middle of a storm, having water in your basement is really a bad opportunity. So keep ahead of the game on your gutters. Wigner says when strong wind storms and tornadoes come, you want to be prepared. And in that emergency kit, he says having batteries and flashlights are vital. But here's an item he says are quick to sell during storms. So this time of year, it's nice to have extra gas cans on hand. If you have generators at home, that way you can keep your generators running, keep your some of the lights running or refrigerator running inside your house. So we do sell through a lot of gas cans in emergency situations. Now he says to remember to have a safe spot in your home just in case of a tornado. Also make a list of those emergency items you want to buy, like a char grill for food, roof repair items, and tarp. Now, anything can happen during severe weather, and Channel 8 wants you to stay ready. Guys? Well, it's now day four of the search for the missing 11-year-old boy from La Vista. Ryan Larson walked out of school on Monday and hasn't been seen or heard from since. The FBI is joining the search, part of a 14 search crews that started yesterday afternoon. Some folks were still out there searching well into the evening, and officials are asking everybody in the Omaha metro area to be on the lookout for Ryan and call 911 immediately if you see him. We have a follow-up now on the Bellevue dad accused of killing his two children. He made his first appearance in a California court yesterday. You want to go back to Nebraska? No bail to continue. So extradition review, June 18th at 1.30. Adam Price was arrested near San Francisco this weekend, and we had access to the audio of his first court appearance. As you heard, he will eventually be brought back to Sarpy County. He's charged with two counts of felony child abuse, resulting in death. A ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is imminent, according to Hamas officials, and they expect it within 24 hours. And they said that last night, hours ago. A Hamas leader described there being a positive atmosphere around the talks to reach an agreement with Israel. And earlier and yesterday, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he will continue Israel's military operation in Gaza until its objective is achieved. 
As Colonial Pipeline gets back up and running again, we're learning from their CEO just how much they paid out to do it. Joseph Blount says he authorized a $4.4 million ransom payment in response to this month's cyber attack. Blount's admission was the company's first public acknowledgement of the payment, and Blount called it, quote, a highly controversial decision, but said it was the right thing to do for the country. Nebraska state troopers are going to be patrolling the state's roads a little extra the next couple weeks as part of the National Click It or Ticket campaign that starts on Monday and continues through Sunday, June 6. And in 2019, 63% of the people who died on Nebraska roads were not wearing their seatbelt at the time of the crash. Troopers and dispatchers will be working overtime, and that's thanks to a $25,000 grant. This year's Nebraska football road race has a date set. It's this Father's Day. Sunday, June 20th, and the fun run starts at 8 a.m., followed by the 5K. All of the proceeds will go to the Team Jack Foundation. To register, go to our website, klknTV.com. Never say never. Two fifth graders in Seward went to City Hall and took action. Yeah, that action could save a life when all is said and done. Channel 8's Alexis Skineski was there. She has the story. Two 11-year-old Seward girls are considered Never the neighborhood seen. heroes. After several close calls with vehicles while playing outside, they decided to take things into their own hands. And now there are two temporary stop signs at their corner. Lots of cars would just be like barely even stopping and looking like when they would go down the road and it could be kind of scary sometimes. I describe it as them preparing for a NASCAR race because some cars have been that fast. At the corner of First and Jackson Avenue in Seward, Lily Perkins and Callie Braunis have grown up next to each other, playing outside for as long as they can remember. <laughs> for years, they have watched vehicles speed down their street and on several occasions have almost been hit from drivers not paying attention. So these fifth grade girls decided to take a stand. They wrote a letter to Seward's mayor asking for the city to put in a stop sign at their corner. And to their surprise, the mayor made some moves. I was really shocked and surprised because I didn't really think that it would work. And then when I saw them, I was like, oh my gosh, is this actually happening? Yeah, her mom dragged her out of bed <laughs> to come yeah. look. Two temporary stop signs were put in at the busy four-way on Friday to slow some speeders down and test how the signs will impact traffic flow. The mayor is on board with making the streets of Seward a safer place for everyone. I think it's great that they thought enough uh, about the issue that they wanted to see if, if they could make a difference and at least make, make us aware of what their concerns are. In this surely won't be the last Seward will see of these girls. Lily and Callie will be making it their mission to get more stop signs across the city and they couldn't have done it without the help of some local leaders. Like thank the mayor. For, yeah, for them. Uh, like agreeing to put these stop signs up and making it a safer intersection for everyone. Reporting in Seward, Alexis Skineski, Channel 8 News. Now those signs are temporary. They'll be there for a while to monitor the situation. And from there, they'll make a decision to decide if those stop signs are going to be permanent. The city council will do that. Well, I will be talking to a very, very special guest coming up in just a few minutes, so please make sure you tune in because you don't want to miss it. But for now, also coming up soon, stay close to your TV. We have your chance to win Garth Brooks tickets. The code of the day could be your key to the tickets, and we'll have that sometime before Good Morning America starts. Stay with us. Breaking overnight from Capitol Hill, the House votes yes to form a 9-11 style commission to investigate the attack on the Capitol. So now the bill is going to move to the Senate and it's an uphill battle for that. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest from Washington. The bill is passed. Overnight, 35 Republicans splitting with the party voting alongside Democrats to create a 9-11 style commission investigating the attack on the Capitol. The American people expect Congress to put partisanship aside for the sake of our homeland security. That is a, a, really, a really striking display of disloyalty inside a party where President Trump has been so dominant. But that's a pretty big number to see uh, about three dozen cross-party lines like that. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell originally signaling he was open to the formation of a commission, now calling the effort slanted and unbalanced. What is clear is that House Democrats have handled this proposal in partisan bad faith going right back to the beginning. 
Democrats are shocked at the opposition. Congressman Tim Ryan slamming the majority of Republicans who voted against the proposed panel, which was developed by a group of lawmakers in both parties. Benghazi, you guys chased the former Secretary of State all over the country, spent millions of dollars. We have people scaling the Capitol, hitting the Capitol Police with lead pipes across the head, and we can't get bipartisanship. What else has to happen in this country? Democrats say they'll move forward with or without GOP help. We will find the truth. If they don't want to do this, we will. But they'll need the support of 10 Republicans in the Senate to get this passed. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. The resistance against the commission spearheaded by the former president. Trump releasing a statement saying Republicans in the House and Senate should not approve the Democrat trap of the January 6th commission. It is just more partisan unfairness. Now, even though his brother, former Vice President Mike Pence, was targeted by the mob on January 6th, Congressman Greg Pence opposes the commission. He says it's too partisan. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. No. Your Storm Alert Team Forecast from meteorologist Brittany Foster. Good Thursday morning. We are just past 6 o'clock right now and we can't see that sunrise, unfortunately. Again, this morning, thanks to those overcast skies, but I do have some good news. It's not raining for most of the area. That's because all of that rain and most of the moisture is now off to the east all on the Iowa side, giving them that rain. Whereas closer to home, we did have a few showers in the last hour in Lancaster County. Those have kind of pushed off to the east and are impacting just north of Nebraska City and Omaha. So overall dry out there, maybe a little bit of mist and drizzle for some of you. And also we did have some patchy fog earlier this morning. That's still an issue in the Wahoo area where your visibility that is, is down to three miles, just down to nine in Lincoln. Now we are start starting to see it impact York and Aurora down to seven miles there. Everyone else for the most part, perfect visibility at 10. So if you get in any low lying areas, keep that in mind. You might run into some of that fog. So use some extra caution while driving this morning. But temperature wise, it's another morning. You don't need that light jacket. It's 63 degrees in Lincoln, 64 in Omaha. It's 64 in Nebraska City and in Fall City. It's 63 in Grand Island. So overall, nice temperatures this morning and great temperatures later today. If you like, well, the upper 70s, that's what we are expecting. We'll get to those low 70s by 12 o'clock. I think some of us will top out right around 70 nine degrees for today, flirting with those low 80s out there, even though the clouds will stick around the entire day today and overall most of the day will be dry, but we will have the very small chance for some light showers throughout your Thursday forecast. So overall, I think a dry day on the way and also a windy one out there as wind gusts will start to peak about 25 to 30 miles per hour. So pretty windy out there. You'll notice the breeze as you step outside with those mild temperatures and also a little sticky out there with very humid conditions. So as we're getting warmer, it's a little humid out there. But back to Stormcast talking about those rain chances. Very low, I think, far down the southeast, if anything, does start to bubble up. And what does bubble up will be short-lived very fast. So if we do get any of those rain showers, very fast. Nothing major today, not a oh, very big washout. That's a good news. Overall, pretty dry out there. Spotty showers may be lingering into overnight tonight or low 64 degrees in this weekend 80s 85 Saturday windy conditions still dry most of the day storms likely late in the day and then scattered showers throughout your Sunday forecast with the humidity just sticking around well the next several days so 80s yay but humidity no muggy conditions lasting at least through Monday and Tuesday even of next week now the rain chances at least through Monday and Tuesday next week notice how most of them are very scattered small thunderstorms likely late in the day. So most of the next several days should be fairly dry for any outdoor activities. It will be humid, so keep that in mind. Stay hydrated. Those 80s stick around through Tuesday, but by Monday of next week, we could see a cold front moving through. That'll cool us down to those low 70s just in time for about Thursday and Friday next week. Thanks, Brittany. Still ahead, a seismic shift coming to LPS's remote learning program. Plus, more people are getting eager to travel as COVID restrictions are lifted. Local health experts weigh in. It's time well, welcome back everyone. If you have not already heard the big news yet, we've been giving away tickets this week. Garth Brooks, not just coming to Lincoln in August, 
but performing at Memorial Stadium. This is something we have not seen in a very long time, a performance at Memorial Stadium. And I could talk all about it, but who better than to do it himself, Garth Brooks. Garth, what can fans expect to see at Memorial Stadium in August? <laughs> well, it's, since it's been a year and a half off, you're going to see a lot of stupidity. You're going to see a lot of errors. Uh, you're going to see just a lot of raw emotion. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hopefully way too loud. We're going to play way too late. It's just, it's, it's a party. Uh, because you guys kind of allow it that way. We, we've played there what feels like a hundred times before between Lincoln and with Omaha. And uh, that's why we want to come back because we've been there before. We know, we know what to expect from you guys. Now we're just going to come and, and take the ride. It's going to be fun. Yeah, well, the last time you were here was four years ago, 2017. You did five shows in three days at Pinnacle Bank Arena, 68,000 tickets. What do you think, a couple shows, India? <laughs> no, 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 this is the stadium, one of the most famous stadiums on the planet. So just getting to be in it uh, would be lucky. And, uh, you know, they don't sell out like arenas. So we're but we're excited to get a chance to play in there and uh, just to hear those voices, man. Uh, I don't know what it is about Nebraskans and Garth Brooks music, but they seem to know it forward and backward and they sing it so loud. It's it's the easiest gig on the planet to come play there. Yeah, we're hoping we can get capacity by 90,000 fans. You know, what, what is it like for you to perform in front of so many fans? Well, I'm going to tell you I'm a guy, so I should not I should not say size matters, but it does, man. It's so nice. I mean, you can be in an arena and hear an answer prayer sang by 13, 16,000 people. But come on, you get in a, you get in a place that holds 80,000 people, and they're all singing the river or unanswered prayers or friends in low places. You just sit and watch, and you feel guilty that you're not doing anything, but you just kind of become like everybody else, just a singer of the song. And it's, uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is cool to get to be Garth Brooks at that time because you're really not doing anything other than just enjoy the show. And you've performed a lot, but what sticks out when you're in Nebraska specifically? Are there certain places you guys go or... No, no, no. It's the faces. Uh, you know, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from the great state of Oklahoma. And, uh, and you know as well as I do that the Midwest is just full of people that will give you the shirt off their back. So that's what I love, man. I love seeing the faces. I love them singing individually like there's no one else in the stadium. That's the fun thing. That's what you come. And so that's why you kind of get emotional. You just can't wait to step out there on that stage, especially with the, you know, uh, with the past year of not getting to, it just makes you want to do it all the more. And performing at Memorial Stadium, definitely something we haven't seen in a very long time. That's cool, but it's, Memorial Stadium is a special place for Lincoln, Nebraska. It brings, you know, strangers together as family during football season. Can you kind of walk us through what the process is going to be behind the scenes of setting that up? Yeah, man, it, it's, try to remember that a Garth Brooks show is very much driven like college sports. I was lucky enough to wear a college uniform, and, and so we do everything as a team. We have team dinners. We do everything. So when that stadium starts to fill up on game day, do the same thing. We're all on the same team. We're all wearing the same colors, and that's cool because what you want is that overall like-mindedness of respect one another, do unto, do unto others, love one another. But then underneath that layer, you want all those little different ideas of what should happen. And as an entertainer, you got to pick that up, right? You got to see what this side wants, this side wants. And then if I do my job right, I'm going to work you like rented mules. It's 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 going to turn out you're going to be hopefully worn out by the end of the night if I've done my job right. And I'm just going to be smiling from ear to ear. And what's kind of one last thing you want to let fans know to get them really excited for this summer in August? Oh, well, man, just uh, for me, it's just a chance to get back together again. How long has it been since you've seen on TV or anything a full capacity crowd? Everybody kind of with the same goal in mind. Uh, that's a fun thing. You know, we, we have a foundation where we deal in professional sports. And I go to some of the greatest teams on the planet, all different kinds of sports. But in their stadium, they're lucky if 90% of the people are pulling for them. If you go to a visiting stadium, it, nobody's pulling for you. Imagine going to every place you go is a home game for you, man. That's the fun part of, of getting to tour as a musician. So I think that's it. Just uh, let's just paint your face. Let's see it. Let's have, let's bring game day to Nebraska in August and let's do 100% capacity. Let's have some fun. Let's get loud and let's treat it like maybe one of the biggest games uh, of the university's, uh, uh, you know, historic um, kind of past. So I'm, I'm, I'm fired up to get to be a part of that. All right, Garth Brooks, thank you so much for your time, and we cannot wait to watch you perform in August.
Thank you. Me too. Take care. I hope your family stays safe. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back in just a few minutes.